just be in the spirit. I, I have witnessed the folks, and you know what, Bishop, I only said a few words to them. I don't have to say a whole lot to them. Just walk over to them and tell them what thus said the Lord. And they say, I'm ready to be saved. You know why? Because it's not me. It's the Spirit of God that knows how to get in tune with where, where that person is on the inside. Most of us say, well, we just go out there with the Word and just do what the Word say. Witness. No. You got to be led. Now I ain't saying that God got to wake you up in the morning Tell you to go witness No, I'm saying when you get out there The Lord has to tell you what to say Amen. See because that's some nuts out there Talking too Oh yeah, that's some fanatical folks out there Talking about their religion And you, you, you all seen them You know down there, you know, all over town. Y'all seen them in them funny clown looking clothes. They be out there just talking all off the top of their head. Using quoting the scriptures too. But they're not interpreting them right. And if you stand there long enough, you'll be just as confused as they are. Because the Spirit of God said, get away from them crazy folk. Now they are crazy. Because they have twisted the word of God. And you can't stand there long enough without the spirit of God. Yes. It just feels like somebody tightening up on you. You just say, Lord, that just, you feel a, a ooh, it just goes all through you. <laughs> and I be standing sometime, I be saying, Lord, hurry up, let the bus come, let somebody come by, let me, because I be, it just makes me sick to my stomach. It just vexes my spirit because I know that they're propagating and pushing the wrong message. Amen. Because God's spirit will testify of itself. How do you know when another person is in the spirit? If you got God's spirit, it will testify. That's right. Now I know a lot of us say, well you know how I know about the spirit. You try the spirit by the spirit. That ain't even in the Bible. You don't try the spirit by the spirit. You try the spirit by the word of God. Because I can have a confused spirit in you too. So we just two confused folks trying each other. But if, if it don't line up with the word, that's how you know whether or not it's true. And the Spirit of God will bear witness to what the Word has said. It extends the invitation to be ex to be saved. A lot of times we think that we extend the invitation to be ex saved, but it is the Holy Ghost that sits, that extends the playing ground there. The Holy Ghost tenderizes that heart. Oh man, I, I tell you, I used to be a tough cooking man. When man come on me. He found his John, I would give him run for the money, come up talking about the Lord with me. I said, hey, you know, you and the Lord, you and the Lord you talking about, y'all going down the street. <laughs> I would say that. I, I was tough. I'm serious. I was tough. I said, you know, you take the Lord along with you, okay? That's what I would tell him. I was a tough cookie. But one day, one day, I slipped off into the back of a sanctified church. Come on. And I was sitting back there, thought I was cute. I had my hair straightened. I had long hair down my back. And I, oh yeah, oh Jesus is right. I thought that I was all that. And a bag of chips. Sitting there. But it was the Holy Ghost that started speaking through the preacher. And when he started speaking, he told me everything that I had almost done. And I thought the man had been following me around. I got real uncomfortable. I said, now, I know this man must have been following me somewhere. <laughs> because he knows my business. And how does he know my business? But do you not know the Holy Ghost will get into your business? Come right down your street. And tell you what you need to know. Hallelujah. Knock on your door. Yes. Now it won't kick down the door. But it'll knock on the door. The Bible says that if any man what? Hear my word. After he has knocked. And then he'll come in and sup. 
So that means he's a gentleman. He ain't going to bust down the door. Somebody said, oh, the Lord bust down the door, came in there, knocked over the glass. No, that wasn't God. She said somebody else. Maybe you were dreaming about something else. That, was, that wasn't God busting down no door and knocking over nothing. No, 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 no. God, God said, I'll come in and sup with you. That means I'll sit down and I'll talk with you. Amen. I, I, he has a pleasant spirit. God ain't into all that other stuff. But he assures and repeats uh, repeatedly he and his sins are forgiven. He assures the person after the extended invitation is extended that he's saved and he assures that person that his or her sins are forgiven. That's how you know you say because the Holy Ghost reminds you, you say. The Holy Ghost tells you every day when you wake up, you're seen. And you know, a lot of folks used to wonder, am I saved? And you ask yourself, am I yourself or tell you? Am I saved? If you say no, come on down to the altar, we'll pray for you. Because, uh, you know, I had a friend that used to tickle me. He used to mess with us. It's good to have saints that have saints that are uh, you can, we call buddies, but there ain't no such thing in holiness, but to have friends in the church. Yeah. And I had a friend that used to mess with me, We about four or five of us, and at the time we all were young, and he, he messed with me, I'd be at school, he said, looked at me, he said, are you saved? And I looked at him, I said, yeah, I'm saved. And he looked at me again, he said, are you really saved? I said, yeah, I, I'm, I'm saved. And so he, he, he coming around the corner, he said, are you saved, boy? And I said, yes, I'm saved. Around about that fourth time, Sister Janice, he, are you saved? I got kind of a little irritated. <laughs> I said, listen, let me tell you, if you ask me that one more time, one more time, I'm going to let you know how saved I am. <laughs> he said, you ain't saved. He said, you need to go to the altar to let the Lord save you. Amen. So the Holy Ghost will let you know how saved you are. Secondly, he enables the new birth in one's body to continue and guide and help us. The baptism of the Spirit is but a separate operation. See, a lot of people say, well, you get baptized at the same time you get the Spirit and all. It's a, it's a different. Because uh, you get baptized, that means you get filled up with the Spirit. Amen. You get filled up, uh-oh, we're having my, my Holy Ghost. He's getting ready to get converted now. <laughs> but uh, the, 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 the baptism fills you up. Fills you up. And when you fill a glass up, you can't put anything else in there. Amen. If you're full of the Spirit, you can't put anything else in you. Yeah. That's why the Bible said, be filled with the Spirit. Hallelujah. Because when you get filled up with God, you can't put hatred in there because there's no room for it. You can't put all of this other stuff in there because you're full to the brim. I tell you what you do. You fill a glass up with water and see what else you can put in there. Now you can color it. No, you can color it with something. You know what? You can put some coloration in there. And I think what some of us have done has been colored a little bit. <laughs> you all get that when you get home. Mm -hmm. The baptism is, uh, the spirit is received after conversion. The purpose for which the Holy Ghost is giving along with cleansing is to endow you with power. Some of us don't have any power because we don't have the Holy Ghost. I've never seen in my life so many powerless, saved, sanctified folks that can't even get rid of a headache. Oh, Lord, I need help. I need oh, Jesus, help me, Lord. I'm, I'm off in deep water now. But if you, the Bible said, but you shall receive what? Power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. So you have power to witness. You have power to cast out devils. You have power to tread on serpents. You and if you drink any deadly thing, it shall not what? That's what the Bible says, right? I didn't, I'm not making this up, y'all. It's in the book. And not only that, it gives you boldness to be persuasive. 
mm-hmm. to be an effective believer. I, I, there's no such thing as a coward saying. There's no such thing as a shy saying either. Oh, he just shy. No, no. You got the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will stand up in a crowd yeah, and say, Thus said the Lord, repent all of you. <laughs> Amen. And he'll call the name out too. Amen. And you say, Oh, you're going to stand in the crowd. The Holy Ghost will give you boldness. You can stand up in the middle of the bar and say, I want everybody in here put your liquor bottle down. Amen. So folks say, You're going to go in the bar and yeah. yeah. Amen. And you can go in the bar and turn out a bar. Jesus. Amen. You can you can go in the and and well <laughs> wherever God send you. <laughs> Let's put it that way. I'll leave it just like that. <laughs> wherever God send you, you can go with boldness. Oh, man. Amen. You don't you don't have to shrug and drop your head. You can go straight there yes. and tell them what thus said the Lord. Although we understand that we have some unrestrained emotionalism. The Holy Ghost gives the believer power over oneself. Oh, you see you folks that can't sit down in a service. They tearing up pews. They breaking up stuff. Exactly. They, 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 you see these folks that, 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 that getting their lips split and everything busted. Them folks ain't in the spirit. I'm going to tell you when I, we used to have a pot belly stove in the south. And it's, it's, yeah, this is how I really knew folks were saying. <laughs> Them folks would get the shot around there. Uh, Brother Josiah, you don't know nothing about this. They would get the shot around that stove, and I kept looking at them. I said, yeah, they touched that stove. It ain't going to be the spirit touching them. <laughs> they going to be feeling some burning, but it ain't going to be the Holy Ghost. You know what? None of them ever touched that stove. Right. Had their eyes closed. Wow. They shouted in the spirit. They danced. God knocked them out on the floor. None of them got up with a headache. They got up speaking in tongues. Thank you, I said, now that's the Holy Ghost. Amen. One sister, God bless her heart, she was trying to mimic those that had it. Oh, Jesus. And she started kicking and bucking. She split her lip, bleeding everywhere. And the church mother says, sit her down because she needs to be delivered. And I said, well, what's the difference? <laughs> And the church mother said, God won't make you hurt yourself. Amen. Because the Holy Ghost don't behave itself unseemly. When you see these folks behaving themselves unseemly, they don't have God's spirit. I like what Brother Josiah said. He said, I'm being obedient to the angel of the house. Because if it would have been anybody else, they would have said, I ain't singing. I got my day off. Don't call me. And uh, I don't care what you say. And they got up and walked out. But that's not the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God will have you to be obedient. Amen. And it will make you subject. See, some folks ain't subject to nobody. Amen. They ain't even subject to themselves. They can't control themselves. They about to go off anywhere, anytime, and at any place. But the Holy Ghost gives you self-control. Amen. You learn how to control yourself with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh, I'm trying to help somebody today. I'm trying to help somebody. Come on, man. Anybody that's out of control don't help God's Spirit. Amen. The primary condition of receiving the Holy baptism of the Holy Ghost is faith. I don't care how much you stand up there and they used to tell us, and God bless their heart. I love the saints of old. But I tell you, they used to make me work so hard for the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Bishop, yeah. tell them, Jesus, 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 thank you, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And they used to, I used to spit all over folks, the brother Josiah, and, and before you know it, I was wet, they were wet. And some folks would come in my face that just didn't know what scope, Listerine, uh-huh. and all of that was about. They just didn't know, and they would be in my face. And I couldn't really get the Holy Ghost because... Uh, it's something else that left me because I was busy thinking about their breath move <laughs> and I was saying Lord if you move I had changed my prayer I said Lord please move them from in front of me because I, I'm feeling a little bit distracted right now <laughs> amen amen I couldn't I, I, you know the Holy Ghost didn't come that night so I would go on the other side and then I would tell the church man, will you stand here and pray with me? And she said, why, son? I just just do it. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to keep from Brother Toflick coming down there because I knew if he came down, I would have a problem. I had to change my prayer again. 